from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. Police body cameras are once again at the front of a debate over privacy issues. Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Stephanie has the evening off. A bill introduced in the North Dakota legislature could make images pulled from police body cameras exempt from open records requests. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric tells us why West Fargo police are fighting to keep the video out of the public eye. All right, clearly we have some uh, issues with that story. We'll try to get back to it as soon as possible. In other news tonight, a new report shows teacher preparedness in North Dakota is lacking compared to the rest of the country. North Dakota has a D on the National Council of Teacher Quality that was released recently. State officials say that that is not an accurate assessment. They say that our teachers are prepared. We don't feel at this point that that D is actually reflective of what's going on in North Dakota. It's one organization that has decided that they know best. Welk adds that there are an array of teacher preparedness reports and they can't follow each one's different guidelines. State of Minnesota didn't score much better than North Dakota. They received a C minus. Well, today's weather is a continued mixed bag. The warmer temperatures certainly welcome, but we still need to deal with those slippery roads, sidewalks, and parking lots, especially early morning and at night. Let's slide over to Hutch right now to find out what Mother Nature has in store for us this evening. Hutch? Well, looks like, Mike, our temperatures will be slipping just a little bit heading into the evening hours as illustrated by temperatures across the region. Notice the Devil's Lake Basin up towards Roseau. We see these blue colors being illustrated here as the cool air brought southward by some northerly winds. It hit the 40s in Sisseton and Aberdeen today, still mild there, but the radar shows there's some rainfall moving out of the Oaks area and into northeast South Dakota where some of that rainfall is heavy south of Sisseton. A few sprinkles now near Hecla. Things kind of winding down there, but watch out for slippery roads in that condition. Here's a look from the Foreman camera as far as road conditions go there. Hard to discern with the setting sun, but indeed slippery. Reduced visibility is up in the Devil's Lake Basin under one half of a mile there with freezing fog, and it's been a pesky problem throughout the day. In Fargo Moorhead, temperatures near freezing. I think we stay out of the precip field for the evening hours, so dry and quiet, but that will not be the case as we head into the day tomorrow. I'll spell out the details on a chance of some flaky weather here in the forecast in a few moments. All right, look forward to that. Thanks, Hutch. Fargo police are looking for a driver who took off after a rollover on Main Avenue this afternoon. The crash happened on Main Avenue and 4th Street around 3 p.m. A vehicle rolled. It ended up on its side. The two people inside had to be rescued and were taken to the hospital with minor injuries. Traffic was congested for nearly an hour on this busy stretch of road. Oh, it's certain when a vehicle roll over their fourth and main, it causes issues and problems. And like I say, the one vehicle is going to be totaled. Police say that they're looking for a maroon minivan that left the crash scene. If you need help uncovering fraud or corruption in your community, here's some advice. Call the whistleblower hotline. We'll do our best to get to the bottom of it. The phone number is 701-237-6576. Call that number and leave your tip. A cleanup effort is underway along Red River and Fargo-Moorhead. The city has been pulling branches and, in some cases, some pretty good-sized tree trunks out of the water. Today in North Fargo, that smoky smell, well, that's the result of their work. They're being burned. Not a big hot fire, it's more of a smolder that will likely stick around through the night and perhaps in tomorrow. Getting rid of the timber snags does a couple of things. It helps prevent problems during flooding and it cleans up the green space. The city will keep an eye on the burn pile until it's out. Tim Mahoney is running for Fargo mayor. He said weeks ago, following the death of Dennis Walliker, he was going to run and today he made it official. Mahoney says there are many ideas that he's wanted to do, as well as build on many of the things currently underway. Mahoney, who says the city is working very hard to protect against 100-year flood protection, says his goal has been to get that work done in five years. Mahoney is the second candidate to officially announce that he's running. Former City Commissioner Brad Wimmer also threw his name into the hat. Grim details are emerging from an apparent murder-suicide in Apple Valley, Minnesota. That's where a neighbor discovered the bodies of a five-year-old girl and her parents inside their home. The family had presumably been dead for weeks. Lindsay Sievert reports. And we just kind of figured that they had taken off and gone uh, 
away for the holidays. This white rambler sat quiet for weeks. With such little activity, the next door neighbors begin to worry. I rang the doorbell to see if I could get somebody to come to the door. When a dog barked inside, the neighbors then looked through a window and asked us not to identify them after they witnessed something no one should ever see. I looked and there was a gun on the floor. And I saw like a heap of things and then I noticed a human hand. The neighbors tell us they found the bodies of the father. David Crowley. His wife, Kamel Crowley, a self-employed dietitian, and the couple's five-year-old daughter. <laughs> Apple Valley police call it an apparent murder-suicide. Neighbors knew little of the family except for David Crowley's screenwriting ambition. And he, he made a movie called Grace Date. And it was about the militarization of the government. Two years ago, Crowley, a military veteran, publicized the yet-to-be-released film on this internet program. Hey, Gary, thanks for having us on. Yeah, definitely the gray state is something that we can turn around and look at, you know, in our own realities. And whatever reality his family faced was hidden from neighbors, a tragic ending that may never be understood. Shock. Shock. You know, that you have something that happens like that next door, and you, you know, don't really know when it when it happened. David Crowley's Instagram account shows him posing with numerous guns. Neighbors have also seen guns in his garage but didn't know if they were real or if they were props from his movie. Today we mark the birth of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. One of the hallmarks of this holiday is shining the light on community service by volunteering. And that's what several groups and specifically one here from NDSU's Farmhouse Fraternity did today. They volunteered. They spent this morning at the Red River Valley Fairgrounds giving benches and chairs a fresh coat of paint. They are among a number of students, not only from NDSU, but elsewhere, who were willing to put in some time to help others. It's a nice day just to really get out and uh, makes you feel good about doing work for the community and doing good for everybody else and helping these people out with what they need to get done. And there are other events in the metro area tonight honoring Dr. King. At the Fargo Theater at 6.30, music and video presentations as the Fargo Human Relations Awards are presented. They are to honor people and organizations who have made significant contributions in the area of human relations in the community. And at 7.30 at Concordia, a keynote speech caps a day of events on campus. Dr. Tricia Rose, the director for the Center of Study and Race and Ethnicity in America at Brown University, will discuss Dr. King's contributions. We want to return to our lead story now regarding a bill introduced in the North Dakota legislature that could make images pulled from police body cameras exempt from open records requests. Valley News Team's Bradford Eric tells us why Fargo police are fighting to keep the video out of the public eye. Police body cameras have quickly become an issue in recent months. In Ferguson, Missouri, the police chief says a body camera would have made a huge difference. How many shots were fired? what was the position of the two individuals when the shots were fired. President Obama has requested funding to supply departments across the country with body cameras. Recent survey results show a majority of Americans do not want police to choose when to use or not use them. But what about making the camera footage public? You have to call the police and they have to come into your home in a circumstance where you wouldn't want the whole world to see something or see yourself uh, going public everywhere. Uh, this would protect you. North Dakota House Bill 1264, introduced by Kim Koppelman of West Fargo, would make images pulled from police body cameras recordings in a private place exempt from open records requests. And Koppelman introed the bill at the request of West Fargo Police Chief Michael Wrighton. But uh, he's concerned because of our, our broad open record and open meetings laws in North Dakota, which I usually support. It may lead to some unintended consequences if the uh, if body cameras are required. My concern with the push to have body-worn cameras on all officers uh, creates an issue of privacy. Chief Wrighton says the West Fargo PD won't be getting the cameras anytime soon, but when they do, he wants to be ready. But when the officer actually carries the camera into your home or into your place of business, there are either privacy concerns for your personal life or it might be a business privacy concern. Chief Wrighton also says this bill will limit to a degree private video that could become public and then used in a public forum such as YouTube. In West Fargo, Bradford Eric, Valley News Live. 
Here in the Valley, the Grand Forks Police Department just purchased a number of police body cameras. They expect to begin issuing them to their officers in the coming months. The co-sponsor of the bill in the legislature is from Grand Forks. Later on Valley News Live at 6, no school today, so kids were given the chance to cool it on ice. And temperatures will be cooling it briefly. A chance for some snow and some sleet. I'll have hour-by-hour hour details in your forecast coming up next.